Alright, huh? It's your boy, Mr. Handcrafted, and welcome to the I Don't Know Shit podcast. Uh, today, we got a guest on, uh, a friend back from high school. We, went, uh, we didn't go to high school together. We were in the, the gents together. Uh, we were in this program called the Perspective Gents Club. It was like a program for uh, minority kids that uh, just kind of, I think, looking for like a better opportunity type shit. We went to the University of Portland. We got tutored by the... the the people that were going there to receive their master's degree in education, I believe. And it was, it was just an overall great experience. We ended up going to a black history tour where they took tours of the South um, in different colleges, historical black colleges. And it was just an uh, open up your mind to a whole different experience that you normally are preview to living in the inner city. Um, so I want, I wanted him to introduce himself, but when I, when I, when you introduce yourself, I want you to say your name, what you do, and where your dream place to live or buy a house is. Buy a house too. Buy a house. <laughs> live and buy like so. Like if you could go to like this dream place, would would you buy a house there? And where would that place be? What would it look like? Sound like? Smell like? Um. Hello everyone. I'm Dominique May, and the I'm official <laughs> Dominique May. He's trying to be humble. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a realtor, actually, and licensed in Oregon and Washington. And dream place to live, I would say probably Hawaii. Hawaii, be okay. In, be in the tropical. Vibe. Have you been there? Yeah. Okay, I've never been there. Is it expensive? Yeah, I, I assume it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the island, enjoy the coconuts and all that good stuff. Is it? Is it like super cliche? Like people like well, the, make it seem like you get off the plane and there's people in like. Is it really like that? <laughs> well, um, well, I haven't been there in a minute, actually. I was a kid when I went there. Okay, okay. But, but they have that's yeah. They have the touristy spots where you do that. You go snorkeling. Yeah. You can actually swim on the beach. That's dope. Um, why real estate? Why? What made you grow up and want to become a, a realtor? Like, um, so I kind of I fell into it, but I started out doing reading a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad. Okay, we we're just <laughs> talking about that. Okay, by Robert Kiyosaki. Right. And in the book, he kind of lays out assets, liabilities. Okay. So he words assets as anything that adds money to your pocket. Right. So when you buy, after I read that book, I stopped buying Air Jordans. Really? <laughs> but in those definitions, Jordans could still be assets. Absolutely. If you resell. Right. But most of the time, you what you do, you buy them, you wear them, what do you get? Oh, nice shoes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> See, but for me, it's like when I so I, after after uh, after the episode, I'll show you my J's. I mean, I don't got I got so I got thirty five pair. That's not a lot, but they're all in box. They're all pretty decent. Like, how often do you wear them? I don't wear them a lot at all. Uh, actually, they're still in the box. Like, this I probably shouldn't say this, but <laughs> if uh, Michael Jordan's airplane went down tomorrow, I'd be making some good money. <laughs> yeah. So then. <laughs> If you sell them, yeah, they're assets. Otherwise, you're just kind of... So, the idea for me was... So, I look at um, some of, like... So, I got, like, the Space Jams. I got some of the Breed 13s. And uh, I got some 4s. I got, like... I got, like, I got... I got think I got 1 through 16 or something like wow. that. And space, like, space Jams are my favorites. Uh, which ones, though? The original ones. Okay, okay. The ones that glow in the dark. The, the gummy uh, bottoms? Okay, yeah. okay. Joe Bottom. All right, so... Uh, if you I got the breads. The, the originals of those, bro, right now, those cost all. Yeah. Bro. Could you and, have, and, and we used to have them as kids, but then, you know, we were wearing them. Right. So for <laughs> me, it's like, I, I, the way I thought about it is like, if I go out or I go do something or I'm going somewhere nice, of course, I got like a, I got like my pair that I'm wearing to like tonight, like that only been wearing, like I got shoes back there that I haven't even worn before. And then there's shoes that I've been wearing a couple of times. And so like for me, I was thinking, like, if I was able to save those shoes and potentially, like, give those to my kids, the value of those? Yes. If, if they use it as value. And that's the thing. That's yeah. why I didn't want to give it to them until they were of age to really find the value in it. Or if you train them to work for it. So that's another thing because otherwise they're going to appreciate it as much. Dude, so by no means am I rich, well off, or anything that's of the fashion of... I'm doing good, you know what I mean? So, but like, for some, for me, like, like me and my wife are talking about it when, when we get them stuff, it's like, 
okay, what's next? What else did we get? Yeah. It's never like, they never indulge in anything that I get them. That's why I think um, my perspective on that is kind of just doing more experiences together because it, it lasts longer. See, I don't know. I, I, I agree with that. My wife, like, when I go to work and stuff, she, like, she bakes cookies with them. Like, we do a lot of things, like, as a family. I don't have them that often. So I yeah. try to make our time together interactive, engaging, you know what I mean? What about vacation or, like, the bees? So I I wouldn't mind. I don't, I don't have a problem. I don't. I think because of the dynamic between me and their mom that that <laughs> – that they will they will never value me ever really until yeah. like I'm gone or they're older and realize what they have. And that's common. And and it and it it was like a reality check I've had like within the last week and it was kind of depressing to realize like shit, my kids really don't give a fuck about me. <laughs> like they like they like what daddy got, you know what I mean? It's like when they see me, I'm thinking like, oh they happy to see me, they like, nah, what daddy got for me type shit, you know? Yeah. You know a guy that talks about it, it's fifty cent actually. No. He has a new book. That I read, he was talking about entitlement. Right. But his, uh, what his son that's, I think there is. Marquise. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. actually, speaking on shoes, in the book, he was talking about how he was trying to get his son to start a shoe business, like where he resells his shoes. Right. And then he started getting the mom involved and all that. And yeah. It didn't work out. For me, that situation is a little different, though, because I don't really know their situation. Yeah. And I'm not really trying to speak on another man and his son. Yeah. But, like, from what I've heard and seen on the internet, um, that dude, his son has taken pictures with the guy's son that has tried to kill him. Yep. I don't know. Maybe I'm petty, immature. I don't know if I can forgive so And it, it, was, it was like a blatant, like, ha, ha. He knew. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like a deliberate, like, fuck you. Like, you know what I mean? So, like. And the fact that he's an older and he's like um, an adult now and he's making choices as a man and not as a child, yep. it's like as he gets older, I feel like he will always love him, be able to forgive him. But I would know. Nope, nope. 50 Cent actually, he said, um, how long can you love something that don't love you back? Right, right. And that's how he feels about his son. <laughs> I understand that, but I feel like there is, there was a, regardless of like, you can love something without being in love with yeah. something. I don't think it's physically possible for him not to love something that that looks just like him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, but but to be able to like really not give a fuck, like I'm sure he doesn't give a fuck like that. Like my kids ain't growing, and I'm starting to get to that point now. You know what I mean? Like I do a lot to try to like be that non stereotypical dad and to still have that title. It's just like, damn, what the fuck am I doing all this shit for? You know? Like I'm literally trying to do everything that I never had. And some like to the point where my kids don't my kids don't know we broke. My kids honestly think we probably rich, bro. You know what I mean? As a kid, as my kids, also, I knew we were broke. You know what I mean? I felt all the struggle that we had growing up. You know, mm-hmm. my kids have never, ever had to ever think about, oh, we won't have a place to live or any of that kind of shit. So, like, it, I don't feel like kids should have to feel like that, but I feel like. Was it good that I went through that because it made me more appreciative? Is there a way to get kids to feel that without having them go through that? Nah, I've had kids yet. So. Oh, well, then you're probably not that person to ask. <laughs> but um, but circling, will, circling back to why real estate. Um, it's just always been an interest of mine. Real estate's been the number one industry to create millionaires as well. So I've always wanted to learn how to invest in real estate. And what better way to learn than to actually pursue it as a career? So, as a as a real estate uh, realtor, can you invest in properties? Yeah. Like, can you go and buy your own shit? Like, yeah, you can, you can, you can um, go and buy your own properties, and then you can actually use your commission to to pay off some of your closing costs. There's different options you could do. It's like it's like, <laughs> it's like working the system kind of a little yeah. bit. Do you have any properties? I'm working on it. 2021. Okay, okay, okay. Do you own your house? Not yet. Okay. Okay. Um, when you when so you, when you're self-employed, they kind of a little more strict. They go off of your your 1040 after two years, and they turn that into income and salary. Ah. Uh, okay. So okay. you gotta grind it out and then work with the lenders, but you know the whole process. So it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Okay. Um, but my first property I'm working on is a duplex. 
Oh, so are you going to live in one and then rent out the other one? Yep, live in one, rent out the other one, refinance after a year or two, and then use that money to buy the second property. So, so me and my wife, um, I'm, uh, you already know, but me and my wife are actually going through the process of trying to look for a house. Uh, we are like right there. We literally just need like a couple more points on our credit score and we're like ready yeah. to start go looking. Um, what are like, um, when I was talking to Sandy, she was saying that. And who's Sandy? Sandy. So Sandy is the loan, a loan officer, loan, loan, officer. loan yeah. officer, lender. Um, so she's the person that's going to be helping us get our loan to buy our house. Uh, when I was talking to her, she was, and I was asking her about refinancing, because like, let's say that uh, we really want this house, but it's at this price, and we can only get it if we can pay, let's say, $2,500 a month. But after a year, hoping to refinance, we can possibly get a lower interest. Right. She was just saying that only depends on the market and how it's trending. Because if, when you're trying to refinance, the market is in the shit, and you refine that you financed your house at three point five or three point six, three point seven, you're not gonna go and refinance in two years or one year for three point two, three point three. So, is is that true, or is there something you know that you know after your one year, two year? you'll be able to refinance, so you'll have that extra money to play with. Does that, do you understand um, my question? Kind of. So I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit, see if it's not what you're asking. So okay. um, it kind of depends on what loan program you're qualifying for too. So okay. like, if you have private mortgage insurance, okay, you may want to refinance to get that off. That can add thousands to your... What is that? Private mortgage insurance is what lenders add to the loan to... Um, it helps to protect them if you were to default. All right. So that's basically, and she was saying that's what you have. PMI. You pay, it's either you have, you up until you've paid 80% yeah. of your loan, or you can actually pay that back or something like that. Um, the, the, so the mortgage, so that's basically saying that they're going to guarantee that they're going to get their money back. Yeah. And you basically only have to pay that if you don't have a down payment. Yep. So okay. if you use, uh, See, I was paying but, attention. But, but again, uh, some programs, <laughs> like some credit unions here, mm -hmm. have programs that don't offer the PMI, private mortgage insurance, but they have a higher interest rate, which is like 4.5% typically. That's but, a lot, yeah, bro. But, yeah, but you can refinance. So some people use that to get the zero down. And people then, like people listening, like they hear 4.5 and they're like, oh, that's not that much. But when it's on $350,000. <laughs> um, well, so long term though, so you look at when you go when you speak with the lender, you go through the numbers with them. Right. They can show you, okay, here is I think what most people care about is their monthly payment. Right. So what's Correct. the difference if it's four point five percent versus three point six if you still to end buy up. your first property, unless you're gonna stay there for thirty, twenty years, then you you're probably not gonna pay the whole entire mortgage. You're gonna usually sell within five to seven years. So sometimes it's good to just go through all the numbers with the lender and decide, okay, what does that affect on my payment? Which a lot of times is only like fifty, sixty dollars. So we're talking since so since we're on the topic of like making money with houses and refinancing and all that good stuff, what the fuck is equity? And how do you acquire that and how do you make money from that? Like what like so what is it? Um, so when you're renting, right. you don't have any equity. Right. You're paying somebody else's mortgage. Yeah. So, so sorry, you're sorry. Down. You're helping down. Right. To cut you off real quick. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I went to that rich dad, poor dad class, which I think was one of the worst classes and worst investments I've ever made in my life. And I have a lot of Jordans. But you paid for the class? Dude. So check this out. Not, so not only did I pay $250 for the class, the class cost $500. Wow. There was a woman there with her family that blessed me and my wife and paid the other $250. And so we were so happy to like, get the opportunity so I, I almost felt like i had to pay the other 250 you know what i mean does that make any sense like somebody's gonna like i was in the class they were basically saying like the only way that you secure your seat in class is if you pay 250 dollars a day like bitch i ain't paying you 250 dollars a day you crazy so i was on my way out like man fuck i was like when you guys coming back they're like they don't know blah blah 
And so I basically was on my way out. This lady stopped me and she was like, uh, me and, uh, I've been watching you and your wife this whole time. You, I can tell you guys really been paying attention and you really like are wanting this. Like, I would like to bless you with the opportunity. She was like, I won't pay for your whole class, but I can pay for half. If I pay for half, would you be able to cover the other half? That's it was a, like, that's the sales technique. Too. I felt like, and you know, now that you say that's the sales technique, it's called the law of reciprocation. So, so check this out, bro. When me and my wife were in the class, right? We even went to the class and uh, the lady that gave us the 250, we went and bought her like this nice bottle of Pinot Grigio. It was like $25, $27 or some shit like that. I think that's a lot of money to follow. I don't know. It's fucking cheap. Um, uh, anyway, like they're going through the class and they're going through like slides of people that have already taken the class and people that were like, um, so have money else. Dude, and she was <laughs> fucking on that yeah. shit. So you you know her. So she got her. she got hustle. We got <laughs> hustle, bro. They fooled the old okie doke with the the nerd and the basketball bleachers type shit. Like you know what I mean? Like hey, he don't know how to play basketball. I'll pick him up and I'll beat you with him. But they was on the same team the whole time. Wow. So come to find out, like the lady was already a part of the program. I'm still happy. Like I I don't know. It could have been their money for all I fucking know, but. Yeah, dude, we paid two hundred and fifty dollars. I think that was one of the worst investments I had ever done. I, so, why didn't you like the information though? Like, what, I, what, no, what, no, what no, no. Say? I loved the information. The information, like some of the information they gave, they were talking to me about conspiracy theories and like Jackal Hill and how like um, the the Rothschilds and J P Morgan and all those guys like basically started the Federal Reserve and like they were telling us about money. Oh, and I have another question I want to ask you. I want to go back. So. Um, I like that class a lot because that class made me realize how much, first of all, that most of the people that you're renting from do not own the properties that you're living in. Even if you're renting, a lot of the people don't own them, like the apartment complexes, all those places. Like a lot of them have loans, they have leases, like like even like uh, big like um, like shopping malls and stuff like that. They're like, they're like licensed and different shit like that. Like it's not leasing it. Yeah. So like... Um, I don't know. It just it, it it brought it brought brought my attention to like that whole like um, the idea of like a lot of the things that we don't learn in the black community. Like we don't learn about this kind of shit. It was like it was like a, it was a, it was a, it opened my eyes to a whole other side of life that I was unaware of. And so for for that, I'm really glad for the class. But I, I didn't like it because it was. I paid two hundred and fifty dollars. Some people paid five hundred dollars to get told that you now have to go and pay thirty five thousand dollars. So for me, that was so it was like, like the upscale. It was like the it was like a gimmick. It was like motivation. Yeah. So um, if they, I don't want to speak bad about the company, but the, the books are good. The first two, right, 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 which right. is uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, the original one, right. and then Cash Flow Quadrant. Mm. So um, I've heard great things about both the, the books. books. Right. That's all you really right. need. Right. Um, but then the classes are more just to ups, upscale, upsell you into buying their real estate investing class. But a lot of the information you can learn from like talking to local professionals right. in your city. And keep in mind, real estate market in general is hyper local. Right. So you might Google online and read a bunch of general advice, like 20% down payment and all that. Right. But it's different from market to market and right. city to city. There's little tricks of the trade that somebody, neighborhood. somebody living in Miami couldn't teach you in Oregon. Yeah. And that's where they were from. They were from Miami. Yeah. You, know, you know what's even crazier is, is like we went online and we looked up our teacher and she's had some terrible reviews on the BB, like <laughs> Better Business Bureau or whatever. And it was just the like... The teacher at the class? The teacher at my, uh, at my Rich Dad Porter at yeah. class. And it, and it was crazy because she had like a whole table full of like thank you cards that people had supposedly sent her saying thank you of how great she was and this yeah. and that and i was like why would she ha like why do you have a whole it was like a whole section full of like thank you cards and shit like that was that. what she's using for testimonials but right but for me it was like it after seeing her reviews it was like ah, uh, she's trying to like i don't know she's trying to basically the reviews were like run run for your life um i signed up for her class uh, paid thirty thousand dollars and never heard from her again, and like, but even in the class, like she was saying stuff like, um, if you're in a deal or you're trying to figure something out, and I tell you to do something, do it. Don't ask a bunch of questions. Blah 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 blah. Just do what I tell you to do, and like that's it. 
And it's like, for me, it's like, if I'm paying you, first of all, $35,000, and I'm potentially getting myself in a... 35000 That was the price for the, the lowest price for the wow. lowest class, was 35000 Went 35000 it was like 45000 The highest class was like $55,000 for dollars, bro. And, and one of the, like... After, and, then, and then they probably, like, say, oh, well... You have to commit something, so you want to... Yeah, Dude, you know yeah. what? So check this out. Like, so I never gave a fuck about school, you know? So, like, for me, it was, like, when I was there, I was really paying attention. Like, I was, like, awake. I was paying attention. I was taking notes. So, like, when I, when they told us certain things, like, uh, they were telling us about um, wholesale. And so, like, when I went on my lunch, I was just downtown, and I was looking. I was like, oh, that's a part... That, that building right there is vacant, blah, 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 blah. So like drive, driving for dollars, so you drive around looking for. A I wasn't really, I wasn't really looking, but that, like, I was like, maybe if I went back with like a scenario, they could like kind of help me walk me through whatever, whatever. And it was like I kept asking them questions, and they basically were like telling me like pay for the class, right? And then I asked them, and I asked them like uh, I was asking them about buying um, house uh, real estate in, um, I think it was like Utah or something like that. Cause you, I think it was Utah because I, um, DJ Envy, he does this real estate agent class and he, he's bought a lot of, um, I think it's Utah. I, think it was like Chicago or somewhere. I don't remember, Detroit. but there was a very underdeveloped Detroit, city yeah. that was a, basically a college town, but there's no real, there's no apartments. There's like nothing there, but there's a shit ton of college students. And so he was basically saying like, if you, in the, like the price of the stuff there isn't that much. I mean, he was like, so even if you don't have anything to do with the property, buying there would almost be a good future investment. And so, like, I was basically just trying to, like, generate conversation with the dude. Oh. And he basically was telling me, like, like, he wouldn't have any conversation with me. And then he was like, uh, so are you planning on buying any of the package? I was like, I don't know, man. Like, I, no, I wasn't buying no goddamn package. Not for $35,000. So for me, it was just like, he ended up telling me basically, I told him I didn't have any money. I can't afford it. I'm not paying for it. And he basically was like, well, just bring any paint slips, jewelry, anything you have of value. And we'll, we'll try to make something work. <laughs> it was yeah, like, am I in a fucking pawn <laughs> shop, bro? And once he told me that, it was just like, I'm not giving these motherfuckers none of my money. They, yeah. It seemed like I was at like a pawn shop. So I, I, yeah, I'll just stick with the because Rich that point has a company too. So I'll just stick to the, the actual books, right? And then the game is cool too. It's like Monopoly. I heard, I heard my sister has that. She told me if I wanted to borrow, I could. I, I have it too. Okay, <laughs> that's dope. So if you want to borrow, you can. <laughs> okay, all right. That's so. I'll definitely. But, but yeah, I mean, it's more just learning about what what an asset is, what a liability is. So anything takes money from your pocket, liability, right. anything that adds money to your pocket, asset. Absolutely. And then most people see the, like, things as assets in our culture, um, but they're actually just like cars, for example, but they're really just taking money out of your pocket, gas, all that. When I, when I, when I first, it's probably my bad, but when I first um, was going to the class, excuse me. I thought it was more so geared like a, of an economics class. I didn't really know Rich Dad Poor Dad. I didn't know like I've always heard Rich Dad Poor Dad was about like saving money and investing and stuff like that. But I didn't know that it was like mainly like real estate and stuff like that. I had I had no idea. I had never read the book. So when I first signed up for it, I had no idea honestly what I was really signing up for. I just thought it wasn't gonna be a good opportunity to give myself some knowledge to possibly change me in my wife's situation because for me i'm not the type of person that really wants a handout and i don't really need somebody to do anything for me you give me the, just a little bit of knowledge i'll go find the rest and i'll make something happen with you. and that's what you did with the class i think it was worth it for you absolutely absolutely that's exactly what i did but the class i think what would you do if somebody told you that was their experience like what i know you really can't comment on the company but like about my overall experience like is that whack or am I like? Would you have ran too? From the class? Yeah, I, I wouldn't pay thirty five thousand. No. <laughs> would you have paid five hundred dollars to go to no. that? <laughs> well, actually, I'm surprised you paid that because a lot they're doing it for free now. Like a lot of them, they do free seminar. That's the first one, and then you sign up. 
That's trying good to go. Again. No, no, no. So, the, so we went to the free one. Oh, okay. We went to the free one. And then you paid. Yes, to go then, to a, yeah, we yeah. went to like a three day thing or something like that. We went Friday. I fucking. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I skipped <laughs> fucking work on Friday, bro. I don't miss work for nobody. Not even my girl, bro. I don't miss work, bro. I just don't miss work. I miss work to go to this class. I lost money to pay money and ended up with some book. I mean, I guess it, it was valuable. I used it. Um, so I think a lot of the real estate classes, though, that where you pay money, you can get a lot of the information on Google for free or right. or Google, combining Google and then talking to the local professionals, lenders, realtors that are right. local in your city. Right, absolutely. And that would be the best way to do it because real estate, again, is hyper-local. Right. It's, it's different from neighborhood, right. neighborhood too. Um, Another so the class wasn't all bad. The only bad parts of the class was it was the salesy like, part. It was it was salesy and it was super long. The way it was structured it, it was and like it wasn't detailed. It didn't I, tell you exactly how to do it. It just no. It was like it it made it it was like you had to be reliant on them so that if you needed something, they can make you pay a little extra money if if, if so need be. And that's how they stay in business. But that's 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 so just sketchy to me, dude. That's. For people, if, if you know somebody's broke and scratching together money to even come to your class, to try to like want to—that's almost how I think about well, pastors. But that's a whole <laughs> other topic. <laughs> but um, not all pastors are bad. Don't I'm not saying that by no means. But I'm just saying like religion's kind of—I don't know—it's gimmicky also. But um, one thing that I do, what I did like that she was, she, she gave a lot of gems. She got a, gave a lot of game. So like one thing she did say that I. I I take and I, I presented it this. So when I took that class with Sandy, I even asked her yesterday. I've asked a lot of older people that do investment and stuff. So one thing she was saying was that 401ks and pension plans and all that stuff is great to have. It's good, especially if your company offers you a certain match percentage. But, but, 401ks usually are something that have to be stay in something for a certain amount of time to acquire the interest so that you that's where you're making your money they'll either and they'll put your money in the high risk investment or medium risk or low risk investment like it just all depends on what you sign up for one thing she was saying one thing she brought to our attention was the value of the american dollar is decreasing for instance like a nurse back in the early 90s made $12.50, but that $12.50 could support her family, could put somebody through school, could buy her car, and one person could stay at home if they so need to be, if so need be. Now, making $20 an hour, you're barely scratching to put shit together, you know what I mean? So for me, it's like, if 1990s, early 90s to now so what the, like say like 40 is that 40 years no yeah <laughs> wait i'm sorry so 20 almost 30 years right so that's 30 years um the values the dollars decreased that much why would you put away money that you can't do anything with that's stuck somewhere that once you're 55 is gonna even have less value that you're gonna potentially have to like like if you have five hundred thousand dollars in your account now, that's five hundred thousand dollars of today's value. Five hundred thousand dollars when I'm fifty-five is not going to have the same value that it has today. So why would you put your money in an account and let it just decrease that way? She said the best thing to do is to create passive income so that you can be making money so that whatever value of the dollar is is current in today's value. Does that make any sense? Um. Yeah. The concept. What's the question? The question is, how do you feel about that? Like, do you agree? Do you think that you should still put money away? Like, what's your... So are you talking about money away for savings, emergency fund, or... I'm just or, saying, just like, in general, just like a, a 401k is like a retirement plan, essentially. So I would say, like, savings. Like, if you wanted... We were talking about, like, uh, putting money away and creating, like, uh, being secure and stuff like that. So... Uh, um, I just wanted to bring up the question yeah. because that's also something that I learned in that class that I thought was very valuable. And I asked Sandy it yesterday and she's told me the same thing that like everybody's told me. Uh, she said like, I'm not like a, I'm not, what did she say? Like, I'm not, an she basically said, that's not yeah, my yeah, profession. Not, yeah. And 
basically you will have to ask somebody in that profession to get a real answer. Yeah, I agree. It's more like a, something for a financial advisor, financial planner. And the only, reason, the only reason I ask is because usually most people I ask is like, yeah, I love 401k. I do 401k. So if I'm, and then I'm like, about the Roth, uh, Ira. Ira, those are all great. And like I said, they all, depending on what you sign up for, high risk, low risk, depends on where you really make your money. Because well, so the thing about the Roth Ira though, is like when you, when you put the money in right now, you're taxed based on your current bracket. Right. Versus 401k, you get taxed when you pull the money out, and usually your career is at its peak. Right. Or, so you're making more now right. when you pull it out than when you did when you started. Yeah, but that's still not going to stop the de- decretion of the, the value of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so so for me, it's just like... I, th- I think it's best to just to diversify, though, so don't put all your eggs in one basket. Absolutely. absolutely. So you might have a 401k. And that's what some people use for a down payment, by the way, for a house too. Right. You might have a Roth IRA too. Right. And you might have some real estate properties where you're getting rental income. Right. Or if you don't want to invest in real estate and, ha- and be a landlord, the other way to do it is, let's say you buy your first house. A lot of people hold on to it for five to seven years or three to five years, more common now. So let's say you sell in year three and you guys are married. So if your home appreciated, let's say you bought it for two ninety nine, right. suddenly it's worth three sixty, three seventy when you sell it, your mortgage is less than that amount. That's what equity is. The difference between what your mortgage, what you owe, and then what it's worth. Okay. So the the, the strategy around that though is if you sell whatever you make in capital gains within the first three to five years that you decide to sell, you get to you get to keep all your gains up to $500,000 if you're married. Okay. If you're single, it's 250000 Where do capital gains come in at? Is that, is that from the difference? That's of- instead of getting... That's, yeah, the difference between what, you, what you're... So essentially, the, the, the day you pay your forced mate mortgage payment is the day you start acquiring equity on your house. And it's 30 days after you close for the mortgage. I mean, for the okay. property that you buy. So, that's kind of dope. So the money you put in is like you literally... That's so if you do zero okay. down, which a lot of people do, you know, you, you buy the house, you, you still pay inspections typically. Right, 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 right. But um, you get in, you get 30-day buffer. Right. And then... So she told us a little trick that if we close on the first, that we get that 30 days plus another 30. Yep. So we're going to try to close on the first. <laughs> <laughs> so when you make an offer, yeah. So when you make an offer, then you want to just write that as a close date. Right, right. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um so now we're going to move into a part of this uh, podcast where uh, one of the guests, uh, one of my co-hosts that isn't here at the moment, um, he, uh, we, we started to do, we did this thing where we were kind of just mentioned pet peeves, like something that we just fucking didn't like. It can be pertaining to buying a house, selling a house, dealing with your uh, clients or clientele, or it can be just something random. But the idea was we were just going to say our pet peeve. And they go, man, you buggy. We ain't gotta do all that because it's not. I don't feel like it's the same without like man, a group. Of, yeah. So like we would say like um, another one we did was like the say what segment, and basically like uh, wifey would or me would read off a fact, and then afterwards be like say what, and it was just like a random fact that nobody knew, and it was just like a call and response, something interactive. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's kind of funny, like when the room's kind of like not quiet, but it's like stuff's starting to go dull or whatever. And then like out of nowhere, you do it. <laughs> and then it, like everybody just kind of like, you know, so um, the idea behind that is what the the same thing for the you bugging. But um, I just want to maybe just say like a pet peeve that you have, uh, that, a pet peeve that you have doesn't have to be pertaining to work or it can't be pertaining to work. What's something that you like fucking just gets on your nerves, bro, that you fucking hate? Um, you made the real say, right? Yeah, yeah, that so works. I, I would say, um, assuming that you can't qualify or that you can't buy a house because of Googling and reading general, national, information, traditional advice. Do you know, uh, um, a little outdated too. Um, you know, it's <sighs> good because a lot of it's mindset. A lot, a lot of people can buy, qualify, and but they say, oh, it's too expensive to buy. There's no opportunity. I'm waiting for the market to crash. Dude. And it's all like a way to procrastinate. Bro, you know what's crazy is I was been told almost all that shit by my mom 
growing up. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was like things like owning a house are things I never thought about ever. Like, well, I legit didn't think I was going to be able to buy a house until like I was like way older. You know yeah, what I see? mean? But so, that's because they don't talk to, they just like watch someone on YouTube or Google how to buy a house and says, oh, you need perfect credit score. Right. You need 20% down payment or something like right. that. But these national websites don't talk about local programs, like first-time home buying programs, right. programs for teachers who can qualify for zero right. down. Different. Even the, there was like a, um, there's USDA loans, there's VA yeah. loans for veterans and different. So, so, so it's just like, like assuming things without going out and getting the actual information. So this is actually kind of why I made this podcast. Like, I'm not saying that everybody's going to listen, but I hope to over time grow listeners, but I hope to give people that general basic information, not only that black people didn't get grow up, have growing up, but just like people in general don't have growing up. Like the, I, like I said, there was no way I, I used to think and dream very small, dude. Like don't judge me, but I used to fucking, when I was like 17, 18, or no, when I was like 16, 17, like my last couple of years of high school, I couldn't wait to turn 18 so I could get a food stamp card, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that should not be somebody's goal, you know what I mean? That should be not something somebody looks forward to. But no lie, that was how my mind worked, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I never, like... like well, I, I, it was a lot of the environment, too, of, like, who you're around. Absolutely. But a lot... So if you're around other people that aren't dreaming big or setting goals, then you could become that too. It's, uh, I'm not. That's what the program we're in was designed to go against, though. Like training us to dream big and to go after goals, to go to college. Absolutely, uh, that program was great. I did you go to? Uh, you didn't go to? Uh, did oh. you? Did you go to um, Idaho? Nah, you didn't go to Idaho. Nah. <laughs> bro, did that you like Idaho? Bro, that was one of the most racist. Would you, would you live there? Fuck no, bro. <laughs> it was racist as hell. Like, I try not to call it, think, like, I try to be very, like. So, well, uh, how's the food there, though? No. The food was. The, yeah, more local. Uh, man, I don't give a fuck about no <laughs> food. We don't get called. <laughs> Dude, give me my motherfucking government cheese and shit. <laughs> I'm just like, it ain't that bad. But I'm just saying, like, the food was good. It was cool. It was. It wasn't. It was. It was campus food. It wasn't like we were eating. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We were on. We were on the University of Idaho's campus. It was like. Uh, yeah, I went to a Western. No, we went to the University of Idaho. Oh wow. So we we went to Western a few times for like I think it was like a few classes or something like that. But we, like our main... That's why I went to college, was Western Oregon. Oh, really? For undergrad, and then I went to Willamette for grad school. How was it? How was Western? Yeah. It was cool. It was a small town. So. Did you did you guys, uh, did you still have that little cougar that sits in the, that cave? No, no. Is that Western? No, you're talking about Western Oregon. Yeah, Western Oregon. Oh, no, 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 no. no. I'm <laughs> thinking of... Cougar, no, like no, no, real, no, no, real no, no, no. So, uh, uh, what's the Cougars? University of Washington? Washington? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So supposedly, like, right at the front of, like, their school, there's, like, a little cage, and they actually have, like, a real cougar in it. It's, like, a little habitat in it. So and then you can take the selfie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, um, when I first, when I, when we were signing up to go to the different places, because with uh, Project Plus, we, you can go to, like, Atlanta, you can go to Chicago. There was, like, a whole list. Did you of go them. to Atlanta? Nah, bro, what the motherfucking <laughs> Idaho? I... I don't know why, but I was like, I, I didn't think I would get chose, so I was just like, fuck it, I'm not gonna sign up, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna waste no, my no, time to dream and dream small. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was like, I, I'm not gonna, they're not gonna choose me. And it was like, um, it got to the point where no one had signed up for Idaho and they didn't sign up for somewhere else. Yeah, you know, Atlanta sounds fun, Chicago is cool. And I was also kind of scared to travel by myself. I didn't know if anybody was gonna go with me. I didn't like any, like, I didn't know anybody. Like, I was that kind of kid, you know? So, like, I, when Idaho came up, it was just, I don't know, it, all, the dude, the, it was like, it was racist, and the dude, there was an Asian dude, I think his name, uh, so what was racist, like, what happened, so we got called, and then we got, like, out when you're walking, and so we, we or? were like, we were, we, so behind the dorms we stayed at was like a volleyball court, and like an open field, and different things like that, and we were out there playing, and like, um, there was a football camp that was there the same time as us, and Somebody decided to like call us niggers for some reason, and what was so crazy was they made us go to our room and stay in our dorm. Like the cops? 
No, not the cops, but our fucking oh, like um what are the people that stay in the dorms? The um, your, yeah, like the visors or um, they were like um, they have like a name. Oh, like the the RAs. There you go. Our RAs made us like go to our room and we had to like stay there because they're like technically our like guardians too because we were all underage and it, it felt like we were in trouble because of it. And then there was a dude. There was an Asian dude. His name was Zach, and he fucking no lie, bro. He like. He was, it was almost like he waited for a black person to, like, do something or say something wrong, and he would, like, hem him up and, like, choke him up. It was like, he did it to this this black girl named Denea from Seattle. He did it to this black guy named Jabrandon from fucking Seattle. He did it to Cameron. And no lie, I had a feeling like this motherfucker was going to do it to me, and eventually it ended up happening. But what was so crazy, it was almost like I was in prison because I didn't really leave my room. I just stayed in my room, did push-ups and shit. <laughs> and that was like one of the times where I actually kind of got big when I came back. And yeah. like, I was like super big when I came back and like, what the fuck was you doing out there? And it was like, I literally stayed in my room and just worked out because I was, it wasn't like I was scared, but it was just like, like I felt like that day was coming. So I was like training for it almost. It's almost like I felt, felt it, it felt it in my soul and no lie, it ended up happening. Um... I was always that, I was like, as I was, I was younger, I was kind of the kid that like always felt like I had to like, if somebody, like say like we were talking shit and like the person happened to walk by, we all got quiet or something. I'm like, y'all niggas is pussy. Hey, guess what? This is what we were just saying. Like I was that kid that would like say something like that. And like there was a girl there, I don't remember her name, but she used to wear a lot of makeup. And like she's the way she used to do her makeup, she used to have like this line that used to go around her face, dude. <laughs> and we started talking shit. And like when she came out, everybody got quiet. And I was like, "The fuck wrong with y'all, man?" And I, I, I said whatever, whatever we were talking about, I said it out loud. Like I was wrong, but that nigga like ran at me and tried to like choke me out down there. Like nigga, you'll be wow. fucked up, bro. I was a kid, and he had been doing this to kids, bro. It was like this little ass oh, buff yeah. Asian dude. Yeah, he felt power. He felt power. It, yeah, it, it was. It was. But it was never. It was weird. It was almost yeah. like it was. Yeah. He had it out for us. And I asked, I asked my mom to come home, and she wouldn't let me come home. Nigga, I was mad as hell. <laughs> I was like, so now I gotta stay at this racist place with this crazy Asian motherfucker that's trying to choke me out, bro. <laughs> the fuck? I was not happy, bro. That was the worst experience. I never want to go to Idaho, bro. But I like how you used it as stuff to positive. Like, you started working out, yeah. and getting big. And that's a good lesson. I mean, yeah, but I shouldn't have to go to college to try to get better my life and fucking feel like I'm in prison, motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, the dorm rooms aren't that big. It kind yeah. of feels like a sale, bro. Like, I don't know, man. Yeah, you used to have roommates, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember, the, I remember bro, those days. There was nights, nice, nigga, I would be crying, and I had an Asian roommate, and that nigga would he told people like the next day that nigga Brent was in his room crying <laughs> like it was bad bro it was not it was not a good experience I hated that shit bro I fucking hated it um a pet peeve that I have uh dude I don't like him choked out <laughs> <laughs> nigga nah hell no I don't like getting choked out um I don't like my kindness getting taken for weakness I feel like um as I was a younger kid I was like overly aggressive for like fucking no reason and it was like as i got older i kind of like became a lot more calm more chill more happy i'm always smiling but i feel like a lot of people take that for granted and they try me you know and so it's like i have i don't have to but it makes me it doesn't make me damn and i choose it, it's hard for me to control myself you choose to be kind but yeah you're, but you're not necessarily considered like nice guy no yeah no. Yeah, I got to. <laughs> yeah. You know, because like uh, kind, kind. You know, you're you're choosing to be polite to people, but if you have boundaries, absolutely, right. and you're willing to set your boundaries, absolutely. But nice guys kind of like let let, let whatever let, let whatever happen happen. Right. So, like for instance, I can give you a scenario. Like, there's been two scenarios where I bit. All right, so I'll give you the first one. I was working at a job named WSI, and there was a dude there named Mike, naughty ass white dude. He was your boss? He was not my boss. Um, we Everybody at work likes to joke around, play around, and shit like that. But, like... That's, uh, that's one of the best cultures when it's like that. Right. But sometimes, like, when I'm when I'm trying to get shit done, bro, leave me the fuck alone. Like, it's not always the time to be playing, you know what I mean? So, like, I was trying to load or unload a truck, and he went and he hid my lift. And it was like, I had the most work I had to do. So, it was like, my shit was really calculated. Like, motherfucker, you slowing me down. 
And I was like, eventually, I was like, ha, 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 where's my lift? Where's my lift? I was like, can you go get my lift? He was like, eventually, he basically told me I was tripping, I was overreacting, and I'm entitled. And I was like, nigga, you took my lift and hit it. I'm asking you now to go give it to me so that I can get back to work, and you're telling me that I'm entitled. It's like, what the fuck? I just had a situation at my last job, not, not my last job, but the job that I work at now. I always try to joke with people. I'm always trying to be that nice guy. But like I was standing on my lift and this guy came and unplugged the battery to my lift. And so like I laughed about it and I was like kind of like, ah, ha, ha, I keep plugging it, plug it in. He was like, what? No. Like, you're not basically like, you're not going to tell me what to do. Like, that all macho. <laughs> it's like, nigga, you just unplugged my lift. It's like you're coming over here to fuck, and I, I, I got down and I play, and I plugged my lift back in, and after I was like, man, why do you fucking play so much? And he was like, what's wrong with you? It's like, why the fuck do I always have to be play, ready to play when you want to play? You know what I mean? Like, I don't mind joking with you, but I like ask you to plug it back in, but now you're trying to act like I'm trying to be a Mr. Macho Tough Guy. It's like, you fucked with me, and now you're mad that I'm having a response? And that happens a lot, and I fucking hate it, bro. Sometimes too, if people don't know you, they think like you're you're joking around at first, and then you're actually serious. That's but for me, I like unless we have that relationship. That's why so when that happens, I'd be like, are, are you being for real? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> nah, bro. I literally asked. Only thing I was like, can you plug my lift back in? And he like tried to turn it into like. I'm basically like I'm trying to punk him type thing, and I I didn't see it like that, so I don't know. It's just a I, I hate my kindness being taken for weakness. That 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 is one thing that fucking bugs the shit out of me, and I and I, I go through that shit a lot. Um, yeah, it's like you bugging. So it, it's and it and, and it, dude, I don't think there's ever been a situation or a conflict in. And you know, it's another thing that I fucking hate. So like. Say, like, we're at work or we're out somewhere, we're in school. Say, like, you come up to me and you hit me or you come up to me and you do something to me. And then somebody comes and catches my response. <laughs> I, I, they're like, what are you guys doing? You guys need to stop, blah, 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 blah. And then I explain the situation and it literally was you fucking with me. Nothing more, nothing less. And then it's like, well, you guys just need to... It's like, what the fuck do you mean, you guys? <laughs> what do you mean, you guys? Like, Because you respond this, and now it's both. Nah, bro, that's whack as fuck, bro. That's <laughs> whack as fuck, bro. A lot of times, though, if they only see the reaction, only you get in trouble. And I, I think that... And, and people are slick with it. Like, <laughs> you know... Especially uh, at, 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 like, jobs, they, they be slick with it. Like, they do something to get you mad or annoy you, and then you respond, and then... You know, it's it was kind of, but that's when like how you've been throughout the time working, right? If if, you're, if you've never really gotten in trouble, right? And believe your story, right? In, right. Right. And if you always get in trouble, then, right? Oh, it's, oh, it's all you, right? I, and I actually kind of found myself in that situation, and that was actually one thing I learned in anger management. It was kind of dope. It was, uh, one of my counselors told me, if you get in a conflict, don't always have to be the first person to tell your side of the story. Because that other person might forget something, might not say something you did. You might go and tell yourself and get yourself in trouble. So kind of just like take a step back, calm down, let the other person talk first, and kind of yeah. gather your thoughts. And you might end up saving yourself. <laughs> well, also, it's like, like you watch, have you seen Breaking Bad? I haven't. Ain't that where they sell meth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I know about that show. There's like, like, a like, teacher and a student, and they both sell meth together. Well, it's related to, like, kindness again. Like, this okay. is nice. Like, just sometimes just by not reacting, it's more threatening than reacting. And I've kind of... Gus, Gus, the, like, villain on the show is like that. Like, you don't know what he's going to do. He's, it's too unpredictable. Uh, I was talking to this chick one time, and she basically told me, she was like, uh, she was like... She was like, I don't know how to read you. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what your yeah, response is going to be. She was like, and I think that scares me more than the motherfuckers is like, I'm going to beat your ass, blah, 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 blah. She was like, I don't know if you're mad. I don't know if you're going to cut me. I don't know if you're going to drive away with me and never return. Like, I don't know what you're thinking. But also, like, when you're reacting to something they're doing, you're like, sometimes they want you to react. So you're giving them exactly what they want. So just by being calm, collected, then... <laughs> 
It took me a long. <laughs> I think my wife actually. Less is more. That is so crazy for me. It wouldn't it, in my head. I couldn't process the whole idea that somebody would literally do something just to get a reaction out of you because it makes them feel good. But for me, sometimes well, processing <laughs> that in my head logically makes zero sense whatsoever. But it's also related to just focusing on what you can control. Like that's what you have power of and control of, not outside events. That's true. I, I and I and I have. I think that's a lot of the where. I feel like my development in the last few years that's came on came from is realizing that I only have control over myself and nobody else. I, I and I do I do agree that that has helped me grow a lot in life, but it still bothers me how people will literally do something to try to hurt you or manipulate you or like. I don't yeah, know. Robert Greene writes about this. Do you know him? I don't. Like Forty Eight Laws of Power. I have his book. I yeah. have I haven't yeah. read it. <laughs> that guy's a sick yeah. motherfucker. Uh, I'm not like he's actually a nice guy, but he's like studies a lot in history and all that <laughs> no I, I, dude reading some of those laws in the book is just like what the yeah. fuck that's well, like that and laws of human nature nature i got both of those books and dude. then um meditations by marcus aurelius he was a that. like roman emperor but that was his journal he okay it's like stoic philosophy which is all about focusing on what you can control right 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 that's dope bro that's how I'm, I'm so into like learning and expanding my thought like that's how you become the best version of yourself. That and, and that's the only thing I want to do. I don't. I'm not in competition with anybody. I don't want to be anybody. I just yep. want to be the that best, was the best, version, I had to learn. best like, version of me. Yeah, that's what I had to learn. Like not competing against others and being caught up on what someone has versus what I have. I feel like a lot of people. Uh, why is that, bro? Why Why are we always in competition? Is it, do you think uh, that's a social, do, I think do you think that's social. cultural or do you think that's uh, do you think that's age thing or do you just think that's just way? um i think part of it's human nature but a lot of it's also technology so like social media <laughs> we're seeing a lot of what but we have to remember social media is like people's best image of themselves right. and a lot of times like these could be rentals that they have or whatever. people are actually renting the shit yeah, to just, get just, just for, to just for followers just for likes just for pictures but that ends up but, generating money though yeah but people's mindset that they think oh they have that how they get that? I want to get that, or they just started their career. There's a, there's, I think it was like Young Jeezy, and there's other rappers that say something like, "Don't cheat the process." Yeah, and it's like it really is a process, and it like even goes to connect with that whole thing that Nipsey Hussle says, like the marathon. You know yep. what I mean? Marathon, like this Gary V too. Um, uh, I know, I know who Gary. Uh, but but so the thing about the process, this is a lesson I had to learn. Is it's not about the end result all the time. It's about going through the process. Because you become a different person. Absolutely, I agree with so that. So in order to accomplish what you want to accomplish, you have to grow into that person. If I didn't, if I didn't go through a lot of the shit that I went through, I don't think I'd be the person I am today. I know, bro. I know that perspective from those events, dude. There's, there's no way I'd be that same person at all. And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not glad. I went through some fucked up shit, but I'm kind of glad that I went through it at my young age and now become a stronger person. And, I'm, and everyone's going through COVID right now. Right. Being quarantined and all that. Right. But there's like some people who see it as like an opportunity. And then people just see it because there's some positive things that it's I, not. Dude, I bought, like, I bought my first stocks, dude. Yeah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> what did you buy? If you want I, got ask you? I got DocuSign. And now it's like worth more than the airlines. What is it? DocuSign. What is it? It's like well, it was what you would be using like for real estate. Okay. Um, It's electronic versions of like paperwork. And, oh, dude. Okay. Um, it's like because that's something that's I bought com I bought some commercial ass shit dude. I bought fucking Delta I bought United uh, Airlines I bought Microsoft I bought GoPro I got Ford I got uh, I got like a weed company a pharmaceutical company I got like I got like 10 or 11 or well, I spent like a good like 300 bucks or something like no, that that's good see you got it was like People are investing in stocks now, but also they're more they're spending more time with family. You know, some relationships are seeing they aren't compatible and they break up. Now. <laughs> Dude, it, this COVID nineteen might, might, might not. This might have been one of the if best you, things of the twentieth century. Look at it that way. <laughs> yeah. Other people like for the gym, like um, gyms are open again. Dude, I fucking am feeling it. It's empty. Like, Last week, a lot of people aren't working out. Just, I went to. I've been to. The, I think it's been three days. I went Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I'm 
feeling that shit, bro. Not for not going for yeah. three months. I had lost. Uh, I oh, went, you see, you didn't you didn't work out for three months. No, I, oh, wow. So I kind of we. You have dumbbells. I, I got a little bullshit, but I like <laughs> I, I could have been working out. Yeah, see, but, I could I could have. But, but, but COVID showed us what we are. So now we have to work on that. Still be persistent. So for me, I don't know. So I I do agree with that statement. But it wasn't until COVID-19 yeah. that I actually had the time to start editing and actually doing my podcast. And that's good. So it was like, it created a time. It was like, God was like, all right, this is your time. You better take it, motherfucker. Yeah, so, so you said God. So I'll bring up like David Goliath. So COVID was our Goliath. So now you have to be your inner David. David. Absolutely. <laughs> I fuck with that, bro. Absolutely. I, I believe in, I believe in, I believe in a, I believe in a higher, higher power. Higher power. Yeah. Absolutely. I definitely believe there's something greater. But not more. church. Fuck no, dude. Because of the, uh, the business aspect. Motherfucker, you give me your 10%, motherfucker. What yeah. the fuck you talking about? You make more money than I do. Why I got to give you my 10%? What <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, it's a business. <laughs> yeah, it, I know. <laughs> um, so now we're going to go into a part of the podcast. is a segment called Say What? And it's basically where we go through and we find a couple facts pertaining to the subject. Hopefully you don't know them. Or you do know them, and we can get the, the, the guest opinion on them, and we can kind of have like a, a dialogue about it. So, Wifey's gonna read off the, the read off the, the, the fact. Um, you can say, say what with me if you want. You don't have to say it. But after she reads off the fact, we're gonna go, say what? And then we're gonna rap about it. All right? All right, so there are castles for sale in France that cost less than a two-bedroom apartment in Australia. Say what? <laughs> Do you did you know that? No, I didn't know that. All right. Um, Why is that? Is that only because it's like underpopulated? Is it just the value? There's nothing there, or what? What would what would cause a castle to be vacant and actually some they're 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 actually available? And no one's buying them up to oppose. Like, why? Why is that? Do you think? Um, Are there, is there too many variables to really tell? Well, I'm not sure, but I could talk about like so what affects prices and things like that. So Absolutely, supply and demand. Right. So, do are people wanting to live in the castle? Are they wanting that much? How much space is the castle as well? Is how much what neighborhood? What neighborhood is it in? A castle in the hood wouldn't be that dope. Motherfuckers bringing in your shit. <laughs> What's it buy? Right. I mean, it's all about what people value. Did you see that um, on the on the internet? It was trending that there's a I think it was like a whole uh, community outside of Atlanta, like two hours outside of Atlanta. They're selling it like thirty nine or forty nine businesses for like one point two million. God, I didn't see that, dude. It's like a fucking whole little city outside so of you got you got to buy in Atlanta, then. bro. <laughs> like after seeing that and seeing that opportunity, I was like, shit, man, all that money I done fucked off, bro. I could have definitely had 10% of that shit if I didn't fuck off on everything I would like. Well, it's not too late, though. It, you're that, right, now you're, somebody gonna buy that <laughs> shit, bro. Ain't no bad shit that gonna yeah, sit but there around. Yeah, other opportunities, like, you know, I read a book and it was talked by Brian Tracy and he was saying only 3% of the population sets goals and writes them down. See, I don't, I don't, I don't write mine down, but I definitely set goals. But like, like, I'm writing I, them down to become more concrete. For me, say. for me, like, it's, like the way my brain works, like it was kind of dope when when I got with my wife. Um, like I, I I go to this place called Brentland where I just live in my head and I just sit and think. Like I, I can literally go and drift off and start thinking about random shit for forever. And it was like when I got with my wife after I got married and like like sat back and kind of just thought about everything. I had literally manifested everything I had, had right then and there to my wife, to like the shoes I had, to the job, to like. You were, you were saying it, or there was it was some it? it was something that I had wanted when I was younger, and it was something I had set goals to have when I was going to like anger management and different things like that. You didn't but write it down at all. I think I think I wrote it down because it was a, a homework assignment, but it was not something that was like like I it was like I kept writing, or it wasn't something that I looked at, or it wasn't something that I had like. But you still wrote it down, so it might be in your subconscious. I, I do agree with that, but my, my brain works with that a lot. Like yeah. I can I can see something and like so you are imagining it. Then. 
visualize it. Absolutely. Like, it's it's hard for me to window shop because it's like sometimes my priorities just get fucked up. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's like, it's hard for me to see something. If I want it, I'm going to fucking get it. It's just the way my brain works. So for, it's like, I just sometimes have to, like, control the things that I think about, if that makes any sense. Oh, um, well, you get what you focus on, too. That's true. That was true. It was funny. It was funny. So when now I was, you're focusing on the house. And hopefully very soon I'll have it. Knock, knock on wood. This is not wood. <laughs> but there we go. All right. Uh, we're going to do the next one. Um, go ahead, love. Um, okay. So in several major cities like London, Toronto, New York, and elsewhere, there are entire buildings and developments that exist solely for the purpose of hiding vent shafts, utilities, cell phone towers, and railways to simply give off the illusion of occupation. Say what? <laughs> what? Why? What? Do you think that's a, is that, is that something that was, so basically what it's saying is, is like there's hidden buildings all over the, all over the place. But that would be the whole thing about Shanghai though, wouldn't it? Kind of? Shanghai tunnels? Yeah, but that, now that was kind of used to like steal people. That's kind of <laughs> different. I think that was kind of different. People would go in the bar one day and wake up in somebody's boat. So you said they're hiding utilities? Like basically saying like there, there's like train stations that are like hidden underground that like if you walked by, it wouldn't look like a train station. There's like a building of business that if you walked by, it wouldn't, it wouldn't look like anything. Like you would... Uh, yeah. So like, there's like hitting, there's hidden businesses and buildings and More established and in, in different local cities all over the world that are very overpopulated that a lot of people don't know about. So it's probably for like um, people locally there that don't want the tourists. People that, that makes sense. There. I was or, thinking, or you know, it could be like like Breaking Bad style. Or I was I was thinking laundering money. I was thinking like, what was the time in the U.S. where um, alcohol was illegal. What was that time like? I have no idea. Uh, there was a whole. It was a. There was a name for it, and I was thinking about like. Um, I wonder if it was like a hide alcohol and shit, like some underworld type shit. I don't fucking know. And have you? Yeah, hiding, hiding something. Have you have you found anything like that here in Oregon or Portland or Washington? Um, Besides Shanghai, everybody know about Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't found anything like that. Um, I would say that there's. It kind of reminds me of some restaurants, though, where you go by the building and you don't think it's, like, a nice restaurant. And then Inside of it. It's amazing. And that is definitely true. That is definitely true. Like, there's some, some restaurants like that on the freeway. On the freeway? Like, on, like well, I used to live in Salem. So, like, oh, okay. on the highway there is, like, Jay's Burgers or something like that. And they had these good milkshakes and burgers and all that. But you would never know from looking from the outside. No, it just looks like, like a crappy building, that, that's so crazy. I wonder why they, there's a, there's like a, this restaurant, it's like this French restaurant we went to uh, downtown Portland, I believe it was. They served like frog legs and shit like that. I used to think that was so crazy. I went to a restaurant. Uh, they served. They taste good. I tried that. In Have you really? Yeah, I tried it in Florida. And then alligator. What does it taste like? You haven't had it? No. Oh, I know you have <laughs> No, I like, said, like, no, I just. It tastes like, tastes like chicken tenders. And then alligator tastes like chicken too, but it's a little more mushy. <laughs> um, I think I you don't like seafood. I love seafood, dude. I so, love. so you could try some frog legs. Man. I don't know why, but it just <laughs> to, I, to, like when I look at a frog, I look at that motherfucker and like that motherfucker looks gross. <laughs> but when I look at a chicken, I'm like, I eat that motherfucker. <laughs> but if you're at the buffet or if you, if someone, I've seen them, dude. <laughs> I think, and I think, well, that, was it fried or what? Well, they were fried. They were fried. It just looked like chicken. You wouldn't. You you didn't try it. Like sometimes, like like the best summer sausage I've had was deer. I didn't know it. I was just venison. Sausage and, yeah. And, and I was like, oh, where'd you get this from? Oh, you're eating deer. <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm an adventurous eater though, so I like to try try different foods. I don't, dude. So you wouldn't try crickets then if you go to like Thailand and they're frying it. If I was being disrespectful and I had to, I would. Because I don't <laughs> want to disrespect somebody else's culture or anything yeah. like that. But if I had a choice, fuck no. I'm not eating that shit, bro. I, I live in the first world, so I don't have to eat that yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? No, I'm not eating no crickets by what, choice. Like dolphin and all that? 
No, why would you kill a dolphin <laughs> like that? I'm too American for that shit, bro. That shit is sad, yeah. bro. <laughs> Have a nigga start crying yeah, at the dinner table. Like it's not even that. It's just like horses in France. People eat horse. They're dogs. In China, they, they're having dog festival. <laughs> I, they, I think they banned the dog because of like, COVID. I don't know, dude. I seen some posts the other day saying like they were still having a dog oh, festival. Wow. Just <laughs> even do with COVID. A dog festival? Like a festival. Like they wow. was cooking motherfuckers. It was it, it made me it was weird because of how they kill them. Like there was there's videos I seen where like motherfuckers is like burn them alive and burn them in the face, like spraying spraying spray in the mouth yeah. of fire and shit like that. Like it is it's like you're torturing them. Well, that's why some people become vegetarian or vegan, because uh, the animal torture. I actually I actually have a um it's my wife's brain. Uh I talk to her a lot, but we um we talk about she's a vegan and she said she, she that's some of the reason not because of the dogs but just some of the cruelty. Well, animal cruelty absolutely but but that's why it's good to, to like eat local or organic farm to fork a yeah. lot of people don't know so, like that's the benefit when i lived in salem even though it's nothing to do in salem like i was around like more farmers markets and more so it's easier to eat that way absolutely a lot of people i had a guy deliver eggs to my porch there's a lot of people don't know about that shit a lot yeah. they, they those, well they don't it tastes it's more expensive that's why but it taste, it? you taste the difference. I had got, um, at one of the jobs I had, there was a woman there. She used to, um, um, she used to, uh, uh, she had chickens and she brought me some chickens, some eggs. Yeah. And like the color of the yeah. eggs, they're a lot more vibrant, like a, like a, a bright, bright, you know, more nutrient too. So, but I've also been taught after watching all these the videos. blood in the yolk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was, but I was, after watching all these videos and learning about veganism, eggs are super bad for you. Like, as far as, like, boosting your cholesterol and stuff like that, they don't have as much pro. Like, they have protein. Egg but whites. It, yeah. Right. Those, those still aren't good for you. Yeah. They're better for you than yolks, but they're not good for you. And I had no idea because growing up, I've always thought eggs were a part of complete breakfast. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm experimenting right now with the thing called, like, intermittent fasting. Like the two meals a day. So, um, what is that? Keep so, talking. like, um, you eat two meals a day. Okay. Um, so, my first meal is at 12 p.m., and then my last meal is at 9 p.m. So, it's pretty much set up to be 16 hour to 8 hour fast. And by doing that, that's how you can get lean so, with just your diet, and then you can still work out too. So, that was like. So it's to get you in ketosis. That, that, that makes sense. That whole ketosis. Do you, you take snack do, all the time? Do you take those piss strips, those ketosis strips? No. <laughs> you test your pee and all that no, shit? No, no, people, no. people go extreme. They, they actually got like strips where you can like dip them in your pee and you can test, <laughs> test your pee no. to see if it's at the level of ketosis. That's, that's, the, only reason I, that's the only reason I asked. Um, but me and my wife went on a little diet and we're, we're actually going to try to become vegan. And But we had cut oh. out, we had cut out pork and red meat and we had seen a tremendous change so we like completely like fuck the whole vegan shit if we're having all this like why would we like why would we go vegan if we're having results now um but that's one thing i do know that the nation of islam and the, uh elijah muhammad talk about is like they only eat once a day and that's the whole idea of letting your body be able to rejuvenate itself and process its food and do yeah. everything it needs to uh, and the way that I've also heard it explained is, is like, if you have a car, you have any machine, you're constantly running it and running it and running it and running it. You never give it time to shut down and like reprogram itself or nothing. That motherfucker's going to eventually break down and shut down. That's yeah. what your body is. So when you do do the eating once a day or the intermittent fasting like you do, it gives your body time to rejuvenate and like shut down and give it that real charge that it needs. Yeah. So and you feel better. You have more energy, and you're burning fat if you that's your goal for yeah. energy. We do it that way. So one thing that I don't. So do, wait, are you going right into vegan? No, no, no. Mode? I'm not. No, no I'm not doing. That was my goal. But, but you could you could try experiment by like starting out with like two days, one day a week vegan day, or two days. Oh, a week. we're gonna we're definitely gonna do yeah. that. We're gonna do definitely do it to the point where we're like not eating meat some days at all. Like so well, like white meat. Like, Fish, chickens. I'm talking about like no meat. No, was, meat, no wow. meat. There's gonna be some days where we don't eat meat at all. So no dairy at all either. No, we we no like meat. we don't like uh, no we, cheese. We, that's our that's our downfall <laughs> is cheese and uh, dressings. But what about processed foods? Are you gonna eat noodles and all that? And, uh, we eat whole wheat noodles. We eat quinoa, brown rice. So um, we eat a lot of fruit. 
So we kind of we only so get carbs though. Yes, carbs aren't bad though. <laughs> so it, it's how, how your body reacts. It's it's like well, vegetables it, it, are it ends up what what it what, what the doctor or what the movie said is it depends on what those carbs are mixed with. So if those carbs are mixed with other fatty saturated acids or other uh, like trans oils. fats or stuff, exactly. That's when it becomes bad. Uh, if you ever have the time, you want to watch it. There's a movie called What the Health and Game Changers. And those I heard are, of Game Changers. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Game Changers is one movie. Do you want me to tell you what it's about? Sure. Uh, so basically, it's about um, athletes basically be going vegan, like changing their whole diet. Oh yeah, yeah. And so basically, it's uh, <clears throat> at first it starts off with like cyclers and skinny people, and then it's like, oh well. There's big people, and then it goes to like bodybuilders and NFL players, and how they went from they thought that they had to eat steaks and all these high protein meats to get the gains, and they realize like after going vegan that they have more energy. They're actually able to build more muscle. One thing they said is, is like um, a lot of the biggest animals in the world don't eat meat whatsoever. Like they don't. Gorillas, ox, um, elephants. Like, none of them eat meat, giraffes. It's like, where, and even the animals that you're eating, the meat, where do they get their protein from? It's like, you can get your protein that you need from plants. You don't have to have meat. But that, it's, and then it goes and kind of tells you how the processed foods and like the meat companies is like one of those, it's almost like big pharma in a way. Yeah. And it kind of controls things. And you, that's not something that you're going to get rid of. And then that movie, What the Health, kind of breaks down the whole, like, how the meat establishment is kind of like like a like a shot caller in the world. And these motherfuckers ain't going nowhere unless we, like, protest and yeah. cut their pockets out. I don't know if I go vegan, but, like, when I eat, it's, like, clean. Like vegetables, meat, veggies, pretty much. I don't eat a lot of carbs or processed. So. Yeah. Um, for, for me, I don't know. I just change it to brown rice and shit. Yeah. That's just been working for me. Yeah, I just kind of look at how my body reacts and then go with that. Do you have uh, any more questions about real estate? Or? I do. What is the most important thing to keep your mind or look uh, to keep in mind or look for when buying? When door. All right, sorry. What is the most important thing to keep in mind or look for when buying during an inspection? When buying well, for an inspection? Yeah. Like you're talking about when you first tour, or you're talking about after like, inspection. Um, both. So, so when you're touring the house, you're kind of looking to see if it matches what you want. So a lot of people get caught up too much in cosmetics, like. Um, but you want to focus on things you can't change. So like, how do you feel about the neighborhood? How do you feel about the location? It's a match long term, not just where you work now or schools your kids go to now, but long term. Universal. Yeah. Do you want to be there long term? Right, absolutely. And then you want to look at other things like well, how many bedrooms do you need? How are, how are the bedrooms? What size are they? How do they feel? How's the house feel? Like you mentioned, you don't want a narrow hallway. Nah, I don't know why. I just don't know. <laughs> it's just weird. I just don't. So that's what you can't change. And then you want to start looking to make sure there's nothing major wrong with the house. So like, when, what year is the roof? Is the roof... Um, are those, is there, there any like discoloration in the ceiling? where there might be signs of a leak, things like that. And then how's the foundation of the house? Any any signs of any any cracks in the house or anything? Um, my brother said one thing he ran into a lot was animal smells. Is that something you run into a lot? Well, because it's in the carpet along the walls. Right, and then the floor, and you really can't get rid of it. Like, if it's, like, piss, if the dog pisses um, well, in the Well, you can get rid of it. You just have to clean, like, tear the carpet up. Get a new carpet. Just is that, is that like most people do anyway? So is that expensive? Um, it's all it's all about who you know. Relative. <laughs> okay. Um, and what you want? Cause what style do you want? Um, so a lot of people don't like carpet anymore. They use hardwood floors. That makes sense. I, I mean, I would. But oh yeah, your other question was about the actual inspection. Though. Right, right, right. So the actual inspection is broken up into maintenance and health and safety issues. So maintenance would be things like, oh, your gutters aren't clean. They're full of debris. Okay. Uh, health and safety issues would be like... Um, mildew. Yeah, mildew. There's mm. wiring issues in the house. Okay. Fire hazards. Um, a lot of health and safety issues are things that you actually go and negotiate. Right. Either you get a credit 
which is um, which will limit lessen how much closing costs you have to bring to the table. Right. Or you can re ask the sellers to repair. Do the I, I I personally am probably gonna ask them to repair that shit. Like, Depends what it is. Because sometimes, um, if you want to close in time, for example, some things might be better for just crediting you, right? Versus just repairing everything. Because what if um, certain things, like let's say, you want the the moss removed on the roof. Well, if you ask them to do it, they're just going to find the cheapest route possible. I wouldn't ask them to do that shit. <laughs> <Some people. laughs> no, 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 no. I feel that. I so feel it's that. like things that you like. You can ask them to do things that you don't want to control, where you don't have a preference. Okay. Okay. I feel that. Um, uh, this is actually something I found out from Sandy yesterday in our little five-hour class, where I'll ask you anyway. Is it best to get approved for a loan before you start looking to buy? Yeah, yeah definitely. Because then you're not falling in love with houses that, that you can't afford. That you can't afford, <laughs> but also you're, you've are you done the legwork and the paperwork in advance, so you're right. able to make it right. like a house that's fresh on the market. Right, right. And sellers aren't going to take your offer seriously unless you have a free approval, most likely. That makes sense. That makes sense. How should you calculate your budget for a mortgage when you're in uh, mortgage with your income? How should you calculate your budget, budget for for your mortgage? So, like, when you're looking to buy a house, like, according to your like, what is the formula you should come up with when you're looking at? Okay, well, I can afford this. To, oh, I can afford this for mortgage, right? So that's when you speak with the lender. Right. And I actually believe you should meet with a realtor first and get a feel for the market and pick out your realtor first because they are the ones that's managing managing your whole transaction from start to finish. Right. Um, and then when you meet with the lender, you want to go over the numbers with them. So what mortgage payment are you comfortable paying? And then they'll go over the numbers with you. Um, what? So like, if you could tell me and Jen right now one thing that we should – because we're in the process of trying to get a house. What is one thing that we need to keep in mind all at all times when doing this process? What are, um, and what are what are uh, before we wrap it up? I want you to tell me that. And what are one pro, what the a pro that you know to owning a house and a cons you know uh, some like common cons you know to owning a house. And then we'll wrap it up. After so what was that. the first question again? What's the um, one thing? What's the one thing that we need to, in the process of Buying our house, what is one thing that we always need to keep in like the front of our mind? Like always keep in mind. Like, um, uh, is it that eventually we'll find a house? Don't give up. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Type. Is it? Uh, don't worry about little mediocre shit. Like, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll help you find that type of like. Do you want just one? <laughs> a, a few. A few. A few. I'll take so, a few. Yeah. So it'll be like. Uh, First, first, do you guys agree with what you want in the house? Right. So, like, some people may want a basement. Some people may want a large, spacious kitchen, a large yard. What do you guys agree? Then you want to kind of combine combine what you want into three must-have features where the house has to have in order for it to feel right. And then you can start having nice-to-haves, too. But, for example, if you want a four-bedroom, one-and-a-half bathroom house, I mean, two-bathroom house, well, a lot of houses may not have two full baths, so your options might go down from 60 options to four. Two. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So just being clear about what absolutely must feel right so you don't deal with buyer's remorse. Right. Um, My brother's in that. He, he hasn't yeah. even been in that in like six months, dude. So it's all about questions and asking yourself, is this, does this feel right for me? Is the location good for me long term? Right. Um, and then what you want specifically. Making sure you guys agree or just trade things you can trade off. So like for me and her, I feel like we're kind of like compatible because it's like, I know one thing she wants is a kitchen. Yeah. But if- She likes this kitchen, she said. Yeah, cause Besides, it's, yeah, the space is right. And it's open, it's not like cluttered and yeah. small. It's not one of those, um, what is that shit? Yowie. There you go. So it's like, uh, if we find a house that has kitchens like that or the kitchen she wants, but the, the hallways aren't, Space wide, I'm not gonna trip off a wide hallway. But I, one thing I don't want to have is I don't want a hallway I can't get my fucking couch or my TV <laughs> down or you know what I mean. I don't want to be scraping on my walls because that's it's not because I don't want it. I don't want to end up paying money to fix that shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm trying to think about like long term, you know. So like it's not like some of the things that I want isn't because of I need to have it. I'm just trying to be frugal. Is that the way? Kinda. 
Because in, in the end, if, oh, you, yeah. If, yeah. You, if, you're, if you're thinking about it, I, I want to save money. I don't want to have to end up paying to patch holes in my wall because I can't fit something down by. So then going back off of that, then you want to look at taxes too. Right. So that's going to be the large, one of the largest indicators of what your mortgage payment will be. Absolutely. So higher taxes, if it's like $7,000, $8,000, then it's going to be more expensive payment than if it's $3,000, $4,000. This, this ten. Um, and then also like uh, HOA fee. Homeowner like, association. Yeah. Well, not all houses have it. But right. Some, like, you got to keep in mind that that's an extra fee. Right. So, um, and then I'll say another thing would be, like, not, it depends on, again, what you want. But some people want houses that are in peak condition. Right. But you're going to spend more. Right. Because, and you're going to compete more with other buyers, too. Right. Um, so, if a house is priced at two ninety nine, for example, and it's in peak condition, it's fixed up, brand new granite countertops and everything, those are the houses that everyone's going to want to tour. Right. Brand new on the market. Those are the ones most people tour, so multiple offers. House that's been on the market for 50 days, it right. might have some of the features you like and that you want, but it's not like completely customized to what you like specifically. You can do that later on. That makes and sense. And save money as right. well. And Absolutely. increase your equity because you're increasing the value of the house. But most people don't think that way. They think, I want this house and they pay more. That may, that I like the way you explained that, bro. That actually makes a lot of sense. Um, when it comes to taxes, does it does where you live as far as inner city or more is it rural areas like outside is that determine your taxes? Um, that's part of it, yeah. Is so like if I decide to live inside downtown the city too. If I decide to choose downtown Crusham as opposed to Battleground, am I gonna pay more money in taxes? Um, that would vary depending on the neighborhood. And okay, too many variables to really tell. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to wrap it up here. I really appreciate you for coming out and kicking it, kicking it with me and being part of the podcast. Um, it was kind of nice to have you come out and teach us a little things. But it was uh, yesterday, me and my wife had took that five hour class and uh, it kind of it kind of taught us a lot already. So like a lot of the things that I was planning to ask you today. Yeah. I kind of figured out yesterday. And so it was like. I don't know. It was kind of nice, but it was, it's kind of messed me up because it was yeah, like, the, I had, I had yeah. yeah, I had all the questions <laughs> yesterday, but now it's just like, well, I already know that shit, you know? We, touched, we touched on some other topics too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So cool. um, where can people find you and follow you? What are your social media? Do you have a website? What are your um, social yeah, media? Yeah. So my website is maydayrealestate.com. Okay. And with that, you know, you can search for properties and um, different things like that. My social media accounts are, it's Dominique May on Instagram. And then my Facebook is RealtorD, Facebook.com slash RealtorD May. Okay. Do you mind if anybody, uh, or any- uh, Instagram, it's, it's underscore then Dominique May. Okay. I'll also, from some of the pictures today, I'll definitely tag you in it. Um, do you mind if say like somebody happens to listen to it and like have questions for you? Do you mind if they reach out to you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Absolutely. All right. All right. Don't forget to follow. And I also do uh, videos, too. On, I'm going to start posting more videos again um, on my Facebook page and my Instagram. That goes over home buying tips as well. Okay. I'll make sure if, if it's all right, I'll definitely tag you in some of the things because I know a lot of people. Um, I mean, Questions? I, yeah, absolutely. A lot of people, even that own houses, have a lot of questions that yeah. they, that they yeah, just like don't. Like what, uh, what, what repairs and fixes should you do that actually increase value? Bro, I had a I whole... Like, I would not recommend doing a total bathroom remodel just to sell your house because you're not going to make your return. But that could be another... Comment. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's dope. So, yeah, I actually do have a, um, a whole... Not you a could whole... You do one for second-time homebuyers. Absolutely. How to sell and buy. How about this? How can, can we do another episode after me and the wife yeah. buy the house? Kind yeah. of like, all right, that'd be dope. <laughs> All right. Then talk about your experience, and all, and then you have a different setup too. I hopefully <laughs> will have a room just for yeah. this, dude. Hopefully, that is my plan. I'll have a little studio. All right. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at idk period shit period podcast. There you will find the links to all of our streaming platforms as well as our YouTube link to watch each episode. Also, looking for fitness gear or supplements. We have a collab with FNX Fit Brand, um, so click on the link in the click on the link in the bio, 
and enter IDK Shit Fit at checkout to get 15% off your order. They have creatine, whey protein, workout, pre-workout, CBD oil, workout recovery, workout apparel, plus more. This is your boy, Mr. Handcrafted. Thank you.